1077 The Bone and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm Nikki Black, and uh, we are not under the bridge. We are on the 11th floor of the Stephen Seaweed Building here in San Francisco. And Attitude Adjustment is with me tonight. Right now, it's Tom Petty on 1077 The Bone. 1077 The Bone, that is Van Halen right now. I'm Nikki Black, and right now in the studio with me is Attitude Adjustment, one of the Bay Area's longest-running punk bands ever. You guys have a new album out. It's called No Way Back, and it's available in stores now, everywhere, especially Amoeba, who we like. <laughs> we'll plug Amoeba really quick. You gotta love Amoeba. You guys can speak up. You can talk. It's okay. <laughs> Step into the mic there, gentlemen. Thoughts on the album? Um, we're super proud of it. We uh, we recorded it in Denmark with Two Madsen and Anders Ludenmark. Why didn't you record in the Bay Area? Um, just because the... Uh, the opportunity to record with two and also record at Starstruck Studios while we were on tour, completely fired up about being there, and it was just, bottom line, it was exotic. Perfect timing. For us, you know? For us, it was like our Clash in Jamaica moment. So you got we to slept. take a vacation and do some work. Yeah, we were there. At, we slept at the studio apartment, and so we were there for five days, nonstop working, and we didn't have to go home after the you know, day's done. We could stay there and think about the music or watch movies or do whatever. And um, it was just great. And working with Two Madsen was amazing. He's produced Sick of It All, Halford, uh, The Haunted, uh, Bohemoth. It's Imagine it's amazing. Him. Yeah, so it's gone on and on. So to work with him was awesome. So it's the best we've ever been produced, and it's our strongest material to date so far. And you guys had your record release show last week at Slim's, right? Yeah, July 2nd. It was awesome. It was a great night. So now that you guys have the new material under your belt, you're going to play it again when? Um, well, we're going to announce something right here. We have a uh, secret gig, not so <laughs> secret anymore, at Eli's in Oakland, uh, August 13th, Saturday night. August 13th, Eli's Mile High Club in yes, Oakland. Yes. Attitude adjustment. Who else is on the bill? Do you know? Um, TBA kind of thing right now. Excellent. It's well, be a it's, really great it's still band. in the secret gig phase right it now, is, right? It is. It is. It is. People, and it's a really small place. It's, it's like we just sent out the punk rock version of the uh, Save the Date card. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> August 13th, Eli's Mile High Club in Oakland with Attitude Adjustment, the new album No Way Back, and they're in the studio all night with me on 107.7 The Bone. 107.7 The Bone, that is Dire Straits, Money for Nothing, Chicks for Free. It's nice work if you can get it. Sting in the background there with the vocals. And uh, in the studio with me, Attitude Adjustment. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Attitude Adjustment is going to be playing at Eli's Mile High Club in Oakland on August 13th. And their new CD, No Way Back, is in stores now. And you guys are also involved. Chris Contos, you in particular especially, are, uh, uh, what's the word, avid? Um, a far. A far. Maniacal. Um, <laughs> you are... Um, you are an advocate Enjoy. like nobody has been an advocate before for this alliance. <laughs> Can yes. you explain that to people? Uh, it's called AFAR. It's Alliance for Artists Rescue. And uh, basically I was contacted after we all know the Metal in Baghdad mm -hmm. uh, documentary came out. Akasa Kuda is in Brooklyn. They're Akasa on their Kuda. first tour. Yeah. It's pronounced like whiskey and soda. It's Akasa a Kuda. whiskey soda. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I, I, I went through like an hour and a half of that with them. <laughs> I, ended, I tried to end it quick, but it, it's a tough word. But uh, yeah, um, they were kind of our model um, mm -hmm. to continue to bring bands out of these third world war torn countries. Um, it was like a nice job that Vice Magazine did, but one band down 40 to go kind of situation. right and for people who don't know vice magazine basically dis did a story on across the coda and then they did then they ended up um two of the guys right just uh they all split ended up off. having Was to slowly the whole magazine flee they yeah did the uh the, the film documentary yes yeah, basically the editor and uh mm -hmm. another guy put a film crew together and fo followed but the they had to film twice over yeah. several years just to right. be able to get in get to the band film in baghdad twice exactly. but then after difficult. After the movie came out, the band couldn't live there anymore. Right. Right. It was. Yeah. It became a hostile situation just because they had been considered so Americanized. Exactly. And it's like a situation that's going on with the band uh, Contrast the Water in South Africa. Um, these are your friends that were just here, right? Yes, they were. We had mm -hmm. 12 days here, and uh, they're basically moving here now. Um, the ANC government in South Africa is out of control, if you want to go online and check it out. Um, because they're so political, and they speak about so many political situations going on there they're they're threatened it's not safe for them to be there so whereas across Dakota was not a politically motivated band they were just a metal band that yeah. had been considered americanized in baghdad these guys are political yeah and they are they're a big target yeah their story is basically separate too 
But they're not just a target for the South African government, right? They're also a target for, um, what do you call them, militias? Not, not militias, but not like really local. South Africa. It's just the ANC government has the whole nation in a fiery pitch. It's, about, it's like a culture war between yes. factions, yes, for lack of a better term. Yes, 10% of Zimbabweans right now in South Africa, including people from Mozambique, and they want all non-South Africans out, whites, Zimbabweans, they want to cleanse basically South Africa. And it's going to be the new Somalia if they're not careful. Yeah, it could decay into Rwanda in 18 yeah. months. Um, it's basically like the Godfather situation. You know, don't kill Fredo until our mother's dead. When Mandela passes away, Ouch. the place is going to decay into some chaos. They have 16,000 so, 16, homicides a month. So how does the organization um, get in touch with these bands and then help them to get, is it refugee status? Yeah, basically you have to get out of your country through mm -hmm. uh, maybe Jordan if you're in Iraq or Iran. Uh, go to Turkey. Both these countries help you uh, achieve UN status and refugee replacement or relocation in the United States. It's like an States. underground railroad. Yeah, so Afar exists for metalheads and punks to not look at government sites to not have to go look at really official looking sites all this stuff is in place it's just a place where they can go and find metalheads that are like-minded and they can relax a little bit because it's very strenuous and stressful too so if people want to a research this or b help out yeah. um what is the website for them to go and, it's and look the it alliance up? for artistic Re oh i'm sorry the alliance for artist rescue on facebook and uh you can check it out there you can be you know like it you can uh, add help if you have any uh thing you want to donate or time you can put in or uh because i'm guessing if you're bringing a band over at some point these guys need like places to stay yeah, or we're hosting, whatever yeah, yeah we're hosting our talk uh, iranian guitar shredder who had to flee his country for his life um it's taken him four years to get here because i remember uh, like a Cicada, they needed jobs yeah you know once exactly. they got here and got legal they exactly. they had to find some place to work i mean yeah. they came they came like cold tired huddled masses basically. exactly exactly yeah. so um this guy, our talk's coming. We're going to have him be working in a studio out in Sacramento and taking him to his first American metal show, Exodus and Slayer, up in Portland. And uh, it's just going to be really cool to have him here and have him be able to create metal music. He is a phenomenal shredder. And what, two years ago, this guy barely even could see the Internet because it was so crazy yeah. in his home country. Yeah, and he was fleeing Iran mm -hmm. at that time to Turkey. And um, so, yeah, we just want to be in place to help people um, with the information, where they need to go, where they need to look, so they don't have to go to these countries and kind of be reaching around in the dark like our talk was for a while. I'm he sure it's know. intimidating, too. Yeah, he didn't know that he could just approach the police there and say, hey, I'm here from Iran on an illegal Iranian passport and I need UN status, and they would, they'd just direct you right to it and they start your case. Nice. Turkey's pretty cool. So is Jordan. <laughs> Way to go, yeah. Turkey. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right. So uh, uh, Attitude Adjustment is in the studio with us all night. If you have any questions, give us a call. 888-303-BONE. And on the way, I think I have some Led Zeppelin. It's 1077 The Bone, the Bay Area's rock station. 1077 The Bone. That we haven't heard from in a little while. Chris, any plans? Yes, plans. Awesome. Yes, plans. Tickets to paradise, or apparently he's got 10 tickets to a baseball game. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Contis, you want to share that story on the air as well as off? Eddie Money used to take me and a bunch of friends uh, to A's games because he was trying to date my friend Robbie's mom. That's so, that's like kind of awesome. She used to say like, okay, we can go on a date. Kids, get in the car. And we'd all he'd be like, oh, oh, okay, whatever. He was a really, really nice guy and still is. Excellent. Eddie Money never took me to a baseball uh, game. I want to go. I want to go to a baseball game with Eddie Money. <laughs> Call him up. I'm sure he'll take you. Eddie, you hear me? I want to go to a game. I'd rather go to a Giants game, though. I'm just sorry. I know. I know that hurts everybody from the East Bay, but I want to go to a game with you. <laughs> yeah, come on, <laughs> come on. I know some people. Attitude Adjustment is who is in the studio with me tonight, and uh, they have a new album out. It's called No Way Back. You can get it in stores now. And um, which which store do we also want to plug? We've already plugged Amoeba. Who else? Oh. Support your, local, topic. Support, support your local <laughs> record store, hey, Jackass. It's where, kids, it's where kids get music now. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, you know, it's weird. When we, when we I thought Hot Topic was in a backlash now. I thought they were going the way of like New Kids on the Block, where they were super popular all of a sudden, and then uh, everybody hated them. We've had to deal with all kinds of acceptance of where kids get their music now. You know, you want to go, oh, no, oh, and keep it all punk rock, and, uh, but you have to move with the times, and where kids get yeah. their music, they get their music, as long as they're not getting it online. As long as they're not getting it on the streets, man. As long as you're getting it at home. <laughs> <laughs> the gateway drug. <laughs> music is the gateway drug. Um, speaking of the gateway drug, um, I think I got into all of this uh, through live music. That was that was literally my goal in life, was to not get up early and go to lots of concerts. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. That's that's my goal I in life. Break forever. that habit. So, uh, where are and when are your guys' upcoming shows? We have an upcoming show September 10th at Gilman Street in Berkeley with um, with Battalion of Saints, Ill Content, um, Oppressed Logic, and, and it's all ages. A band that we haven't played with in years, Visual Discrimination. Visual discrimination. Nice. And uh, Gilman Street, for those of you who don't know, it is a membership club, but it is an all-ages club, and it's an institution it for really all is. kids. I went to Gilman when I was, I think, 13. That's where Green, Ga- Green Day got their start. Yeah. and uh, Kind of everybody's played there. Everybody's played there, yeah. Everybody before they're anybody plays at Gilman Street. Yeah, and then when you're somebody, you're not allowed to play there anymore. <laughs> they, do they still do that? No. No, just they won't. Okay. Yeah. No, because I remember hearing it at times. Oh, it was like where that. Ba- it was for a while. Bands were like, "No, we can't play. They won't let us play at Gilman anymore. We're too big. No managers. No major la- labels. No. No. You got signed. Get no. out of Gilman forever." But the beauty about Gilman Street is it looks exactly the same. And it's still there. We it's went still to there. Um, we went to the show uh, the show for Toby. Who was it? The play was it you guys that played that night? Yeah, Fang. Fang. I was I was yeah I was kind of in it like a daze, but um, yeah. That was like the first time I had been back in Gilman for years. Yep. And I walked in the door and I was like, it hasn't changed a bit. I think it was the same couch. Oh, it could be. <laughs> it could be. Sure Suit up. There was like all this like classic graffiti on the wall that I remember when it was yeah. brand new. And, and I was afraid to see the bathroom because I figured it probably looked exactly the same You're too. afraid to sit on the couch. But you know what else I noticed? The snacks are healthy now. Yes, healthy Berkeley yeah. snacks. They never Gilman had <laughs> Gilman Street. <laughs> Gilman Street did not have vegan snacks when I was a kid. No, no. We have vegan barbecues now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. wrong. So the vegan barbecue and uh, and and in minor confession because I think that the uh, statute of limitations has probably expired on this. I used to sell drugs at Gilman. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we would show up and park in a van down by the. There's like railroad tracks like right around the corner, right? This is turning into Doctor Drew. Yeah. yeah. What? I'm still I'm still drugs off you you might have you might have off the air. I'll tell you what kind of drugs I sold, and you can you can tell me whether or not you bought them from me at the Gilman Street. <laughs> Paging Doctor Drew. Shh, it's one zero seven seven the bone. One zero seven seven the bone. That is Pat Benatar. There are actually three girls at Ridgemont High that are cultivating the Pat Benatar look. Uh, in Whoa. the studio with me is Attitude Adjustment. Their new album, No Way Back, is in stores now. Plug a new record store. Please try and make it an independent. Anyone? Record store. Um. What about that one you were? How about uh, <laughs> earpiece records on Adeline? <clears throat> Thank you. And Alcatraz. Excellent. In Oaklandish, Berkeley, North Oakland. Yes. Live your music. Support your local record stores in real life. Agree more. Oh, and Shaxel Records Shaxel? on Hage Street. Nice. Uh, two, by three, the old Go Records on Fifty First in Oakland. Yeah. So See, cool. there's a few. There's there still are. a few out there in existence. You have to dig, kids. You have to dig. <laughs> All right, so uh, Bay Area Memories, since everybody's been around here longer than uh, God, who's got a really good show story from way back when? Share around the campfire with the kitties. A show story. Go. Come on. Come on. One time we were at the farm in San Francisco, and this guy walked up and he said, hey, you guys want to smoke some pot? And we were like, sure. So he started smoking this joint. And then somebody said, that smells kind of weird. And then Kevin looked over and said, oh, I think this is KJ. I love KJ. (laughs) And then 10 minutes later, check Kevin in the fetal position on the ground, shaking. I'm 44 feet tall, crushing the cement with my feet. And my friend is holding his head, sobbing in his melting hands. And we were all drinking milk after that. I I meant like a a music story. Oh, a music story. (laughs) Well, there was a show at the farm going on. I don't remember any of the bands that were playing, but it was music driven. That's like get him to always come back. That's like get him to the Greek with the Jeffrey. (laughs) Yeah, you think these movies are written? Stroke the furry wall. (laughs) Observe. Yeah, (laughs) art is actually imitating life. It's not the other way around. One person I miss a lot from shows is Toby Rage, um, and doing stage dives with him. That's I actually, if if you want to see uh, the most amazing head walking picture of Toby Rage, it's it's on my Facebook, um, and I'm sure it's on your Facebook, and uh, it's Got also it. the uh, the T-shirt. Yeah. Right, the Toby Rage T-shirt. Oh, this is a good time to plug the Murder in the Front Row. Oh, the book. Harold O. and Brian yes. Lou's book, Harold and Brian. capturing the good days of thrash. 
I, I, I've been waiting to plug it because it's still kind of in the uh, not out yet phase, but it's getting closer, right? Isn't it coming out like in a couple months? Some big old to do thing about it. I don't yeah. know if it's out exactly, but make sure you keep your ear to the ground and see it and get it. So it's going to be called Murder in the Front Row, and yes. it's uh, all the pictures. I mean, Harold, Harold O and Brian Liu were front lines guys that weren't in bands. They caught they, it all. They took pictures of everyone and everything. And yeah. like Harold is practically a professional photographer at this point, And Brian is practically a professional archivist because they Big both time. saved everything. It's That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, they caught some of the greatest stuff. They caught all the stuff on. we don't remember. Right. <laughs> it's kind of frightening. Remember the 80s? No. Not so much. And that's how they're supposed to be. Exactly. Because if you remember it, you probably weren't there. I know that uh, I've had a couple concussions that have taken a lot of it away from me. Attitude Adjustment is in the studio with me all night tonight. Give us a call if you got any questions. 888-303-BONE. And I think I have Chris's favorite band up next. It's Pink Floyd on 107.7 nice. The Bone. It's actually somebody you like a little better than that. String it upside down for the left-handed genius that is Jimi Hendrix.